Praise him, praise him, praise him. For he's worthy to be praised. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Jesus, you're so worthy to be praised. Come on, we thank him, we thank him, we thank him because he's truly worthy to be praised. As the sum, as I look back over my life, oh, he's worthy to be praised. And I began to think things over. Oh, he's worthy to be praised. Come on, he's worthy, he's worthy. I know as, if it, as you're looking on Facebook and you're looking from YouTube, oh, he is so worthy. Come on, he's worthy. I'm standing here because he's worthy to be praised this morning. We just want to let you know as you're watching from YouTube and from Facebook, we here in the sanctuary, we thank God for you. Come on, begin to give him glory right now. Give him glory. I know I'm excited about being in the house of the Lord this morning. And even as we know that we've had trying times this week and some of the things that didn't go the way that we thought that they was going to go, we know this morning because we are here this morning because he has touched us this morning with just a finger this morning just to let us know this morning that he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Our scripture comes this morning. It says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the ferment of his power. Praise him for his mighty act. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and hop. Come on. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him with the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let Come on, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Come on, come on, we praise him. We praise him. We praise him. Yet, oh God, you're worthy this morning. You're worthy to be praised. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we've heard it so many times, yet when we were children, we would hear our mothers, fathers, grandmothers, everybody say, if I had 10,000 tongues, I just couldn't praise you enough. So, Father God, as many of us begin to lift our hands this morning, oh God, and for those who are watching this morning, you two lift your hands and say, oh God, if I had 10,000 tongues this morning, hallelujah. I just couldn't praise you enough this morning. So, Father God, thank you this morning. Thank you. Some of us, you know what's on your heart this morning. Thank you. Thank you, oh God. It's because of your divine love that we are here this morning. So we thank you, Lord, right now. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for just allowing us just to come in this morning on these, your holy grounds this morning, sacred this morning, in the name of Jesus, for just allowing us just to come in and give you praise and thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, dear God, for that the atmosphere has all, it's already been uh, saturated with your presence this morning. So he says, because we're two or three, are gathered in my name, I will be there. So we thank you that you're here with us this morning. Father God, we thank you for the word that is coming forth to us this morning. Not just any word, oh God, but your rainbow word that has already been prepared for us, oh God. And right now, as we praise you, oh God, we are ready, oh God, is to receive it right now in the name of Jesus and even as your praise and worship began is to flow into this room oh God we give you praise for it right now in the name of Jesus we know oh God that you are God of order and service so we thank you right now that there will be 
no confusion right now. In the name of Jesus. And this, oh God, come on, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Come on, come on. Amen. Come on, we praise him. Come on, we give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. 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 All right, all right. Come on, praise him. Let us get ready to worship God. Amen. Good morning, everybody. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And do we have any blessed people in the house this morning? Is this your season to be blessed this morning? Hallelujah. The song says it's your season to be blessed. How many came to bless the Lord on today? How many came to praise the Lord on today? Come on, let's worship him.
to be blessed. I don't know about anybody, but this is the season I'm living in. Amen. I planted so many seeds, amen, in this year. Amen. I'm looking for a harvest. I don't know about you today, but I'm looking for a harvest. I'm looking for a blessing. This is our season to be blessed on today. Amen. The song says it's your season for grace and favor. How many believe that it's your season for grace and favor today? Hallelujah. Come on, we're going to sing this song for you. We want to minister to your hearts in this song. It's your season for grace and favor. Let the song minister to you. Everything is wild. 
season of this month, amen, and the season of this uh, celebration, amen, we know that a son was given, a child was born, amen, and in no other name, of, uh, the, in no other name but the name of Jesus, hallelujah, this song says, oh, what a wonderful child, Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child, ready?
All right, JC. this is the season for me amen in spite of what you may be going through i don't know amen but we want to encourage you we want to remind you to let you know that, that god is able to do exceedingly above all that you can ask or think amen he's worthy to be praised god is able
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to believe it this morning. You got to know that God will come through no matter what the circumstances may look like. But believe in the word of God. He mean what he say. He mean what he say. All of his promise, he will come through for you. Oh, don't be up on God. Don't be up on God. Get it while it's going good. Huh? Come, on, man. Yeah. Come on and bless the Lord this morning. Amen. Let's thank God. Come on, let's worship Him. Come on, give God some praise right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, come on, open up your mouth. Come on, come on. Let everything that has breath. Hey, come on. You'll be dead in my grave. Praise Him. Praise Him. Come on, I need somebody to understand. There's some folk that can't do this this morning. There's some folk that have been doing it for 40 years, but this morning their body gave out on them. Yours didn't. You're here for a reason. You're here to give God what, what the folk in the hospital can't give him, what the grave can't give him, what babies can't give him. You're here with, 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 with retarded people. You're here to give God a praise. Now the old volition. In spite of what you're going through. Come on. It's a worshiping church. There's breakthrough in the house. There's miracles in the house. You worship. Come on. Praise. Point back to him. Praise. Keep the focus on him. Praise. The yellow mic.
Lord, declare it. song I like. Yes, sir. What? There's no way. There's Hallelujah. No. Bless your name, Jesus. There is no way we can live without him. That's right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't need no music. Don't need no music. You just need to remember. You just need to remember. Had it not been for the Lord, I said, had it not been for the law. This is my testimony to the Lord this morning. I want him to know this. Hegel, if don't nobody else get this head, I want him to know this.
You know, you know, I, I guess for some of us, the book is still the book is still out on what we should be doing. Even sometimes I think that for myself. You might say, man, you're the pastor. But let me tell you something. The book ain't out on where I should be this morning. Nobody caught that. I said the book might be still out on who I should be and what I'm trying to become. But the book certainly ain't out on where I should be this morning. I know I should. Oh, come on, somebody. Somebody say, I know I'm in the right place. That worship did something for me. Somebody said, I got an exchange. I got an exchange. Oh, come on. Say it. There was an exchange this morning. I gave him something. I gave him something. And he gave me something and back. And he gave me something Now back. open up your mouth and give him some praise. Christian Fellowship Praise Team. Come on. Yeah. Come on, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. That's all right. Bless you. Come on, they need to be encouraged. You don't know what they go through during the week. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. You don't know what their Monday's going to be like. You don't know what their Bless Tuesday's going to be like. They're cooking for us. They're handling our food. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Give them something to encourage them to live right. To walk right. To, to, oh, come on, come on, don't stop. We got him right where we want. Hey, hey, come on, come on, come on, come on, don't play around. They got a responsibility. Open up your mouth. They lead us to the word. Come on, saints. Hey, come on. You don't be arguing focus serving your food you give thanks Say it, Bishop. you don't fool around the folk that's handling your food you give them thanks come on let's give them thanks come on encourage them hey come on shut up hey That's how you do it. Hey, hey. I sense the spirit of God in this place. You gotta encourage them. You gotta encourage them. They have a responsibility, unlike anybody else's, to lead us to the place where God wants us to be. And the devil is constantly on their trail. You better pray for them. You better encourage them. You don't want no strange praise. The more you encourage them, they see their responsibility. They sense the accountability, the weight that's on their life to live right from Monday to Monday. That's right. They stir in the food. You don't want nobody handling your food ain't clean their hands. I say you don't want nobody handling your food ain't wash their hands. You get stomach poison. It kind of diseases. That's why you encourage them. Don't look at what they're wearing. Say that. Talk to us. Encourage them. Look at the color of their skin or their hair. Do look at them and say, God, we need them. They serve a purpose that I don't serve. And we need them to lead us to that place. Hallelujah. Sweet Holy Spirit. Sweet Holy Spirit. Sweet Heavenly Dem. Sweet Holy Spirit. Uh-huh. <laughs> he brings it all together. Sweet. 
Keep bringing it all together. Keep bringing the praise team, the choir, the pastor, pastor's wife, the, the deacons, the ushers. He brings us all together in concert. Empowers us to do the work. distracted we're not distracted this morning it's going to him Chris it's going to him that's good it's going to him. we're not distracted this morning it's going to him I said it's going to him this morning let the rivers Thank you. 
That's right. Now let's give them another hand. Amen. About ready now. Wow. I'm in awe of what, what's happening in this building, in this place. I'm in awe. I said I'm in awe like a child in a candy store. I can shout. I can cry. I can jump. I can leap. I can jump. Ah. Hey, hey. the time. How many know the Lord is good? I'm telling you, I get jumped up here. I just feel I feel so excited and invigorated at, at what I've been witnessing. What a what an awesome praise service we just had. I was compelled for you to encourage them and I knew I hit the I hit the spirit because I sensed what happened afterwards. I'm glad I'm alive this morning. I say that, I say that not jokingly. You know, oftentimes we're, we could be in a series or doing something um, that we, we have predetermined last week or a month ago, this is what we're doing. And then all of a sudden God will say, okay, stop. And you got to say something real time because something just happened. Something just happened. In, in the Midwest it didn't happen down here but it happened in this country and I don't know let me tell you something what's, what's really is strange people went on like ain't nothing happened what a disconnect JC let's listen when I saw that I had to do my research I, I wanted to know why specifically was that area hit so hard and I did some research Back in 18, I think, 97, they had a race war there. A race war. In the city of Kentucky where that, where, that, where that hurricane just wiped it out. There was a race war. Now, you know, there, there couldn't have been no war because we had no weapons. In 1897, we had no weapons. We had no, we had no representation. So somebody had put out a word that 250 blacks were armed that were going to kill some people. And, you know, that was just hysteria. And it got all the good white folks and the bad white folks mad, and they started killing black people. 1897, 18, no, the date, I might be a little off, but there was a race war. That same area that experienced such, such tragedy. I was listening to, to three or four sisters on the phone. They were calling from the candle shop. They would say, please, Lord, have mercy. Hey, Lord Jesus. I said, they were saved. Hmm. I started crying when I heard their voices because guess what? When they got there, they could not find anybody alive. The whole city wiped out. When did it happen? At night. At night. Watch it. When people sleep. Now watch. Listen. There was a siren because they... We've we gotten so smart, we know when certain things are happening. So they gave a siren, but guess what? You can hear a siren and still not get up. Because you've heard them before. What they woke up to, they had no idea when they went to sleep. I've come to tell you, you don't know what you're going to wake up to tomorrow. Say that, sir. Speak a word, speak a word, speak a word, doctor. Mr. Cutie and Mrs. Cutie, you don't know. Speak a word, bro. You, you, and you, and you got to really appreciate the fact that you woke up this morning <laughs> under clear skies. I said, you better give God yeah, praise. Jesus. You, come on. That you got some drinking water that you could drink this morning. 
that you can wash up this morning. I kind of need to get somebody in here to really understand that your life could be different this morning. All your clothes could be gone. I heard a report. They said, watch this, that, that, that there was a photograph that they found that was in Kentucky originally. They found it all the way in Indiana. Folk bought new clothes the day before, and guess what? The, when they woke up, the new clothes were gone. So God said, I want you to, I want you to talk to them about the, 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 the sign of my coming. Healing the house, man. So I want you to tell them because you see, you, you see, I, I don't want them to be, I don't want them to be deceived about me coming. Hmm. And there's some specific scriptures and what has happened in, in the days that we live in, they've, they've manipulated the scriptures, they made us have the wrong focus been looking at the wrong things listen there's no way I'm going to live in the Midwest with my family knowing that hurricanes could come and wipe the house off the top of, the, of, the, of its foundation and not have a basement somebody said why a basement but why a basement a basement because the basement looked like the only thing that will save me if a, if a storm came through like that somebody said preparation Look at uh, Matthew 24. We're going to read verse 1 through verse 8. When you have time, read the whole chapter, 1 through 24. But I just want to read 1 through 8 for our hearing this morning in the King James Version. Here, here begins the reading of God's Word. And once again, thank you for uh, all our viewers, Facebook Live, YouTube, and especially those that are here physically in our service today. Thank you so much for coming. Special thanks for all our family and faithful givers and servants during this time. Your free will offerings are much appreciated. We can't do this without your help. Amen. And we hope after this message has been preached, taught, and our singing has been completed, that somebody's life is restored. That somebody makes a decision to get saved and stay saved. Why? Because the hour that we're living in is, is far spent. Here begins the reading of the Word of God. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Jesus said to them, See you not that all these things verily I say unto you, there shall not be one, there shall not be left there one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him and privately saying, Tell us, tell us, when shall these things what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now, what you know, son, there are three questions they're asking him. They want to know when the temple's going to be destroyed. They want to know when he's coming. And they want to know when the world's going to come to an end. And Jesus answered and said to them, this is how he answers their question. Take heed. Take heed. All these things begin to happen. That nobody deceives you. For many shall come in my name. Saying. I am Christ. And shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars. And rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet for nation shall rise against nation kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines pestilence earthquakes in diverse places and all these are the beginnings of sorrow so for the scriptures i want to talk to you for a few moments and i think we'll be we'll be in this this vein probably to the years out what shall be the sign of his coming father have your way in this place minister to these your people i am nothing but a vessel a vessel made of clay subject to like passions the people that are here prone to make many mistakes I stand here guilty as charged 
but I accept my charge and responsibility. I know this morning that I can do all things through you. Help the unlearned learn. Edify these, your people, minister effectively that, that at the end of this exercise, your name shall be glorified. And all the people that are present and will see this here and even when I'm dead and gone shall be edified. This and all other merits we beg in the wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. Clap your hands if you love him. This is a great church. I love being here. I really do. I love you guys. And I'm excited about the amount of people that are in here this morning. <laughs> I started to wear some red the day my mom and T got me. I beat the day they, I'm going to fit to pull a hat off you or a scarf or throw a slash on me. Throw me some red on, man. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even know who Charity was. She stepped out. Who is this fine girl in front of me? <laughs> Let me see. What? Well, she is fine, ain't she? She my daughter. I didn't know who she was. I had to turn around this second week and well, I didn't know who she was. Amen. But I'm just so grateful and glad my wife is back from her trip. Amen. Amen. She was out for a week in California. She wants to say a few things about, about the uh, gifts and cards that y'all gave her. And I'm going to give her a deference in a few moments. But I, I, I just feel compelled this morning. I don't know how anybody can get up and see what took place out there and not be somewhat bothered. And what really bothered me, uh, woman of God, what really bothered me was that while this was happening, they were playing basketball in Marquette. They were playing basketball in all these different universities, and people were shouting, and people were hollering, and, and they were going crazy. And I was watching, too, and I said, man, how could you be happy? And all these people have lost everything. They've lost. They, their life will never be the same. And isn't that interesting about a nation that calls itself the United Nation, or the United States, or the United States of America, something like that so tragic could happen to such a large span of our country, and we could go about our business just like ain't nothing happened. That's, that's, that's mind-boggling for me. I said, that's mine. Why? Because that could have been me. We live in an area, this, this area that we live in, in Florida. We're not exempt from these cataclysmic events. Next year, this time, it could be our turn. Where we have 12-foot high waves that come in and drown all of Florida. You better give God thanks. You better give God praise that what happened out there did not happen to you. And you ought to start praying for the people that we're going through right now because you could be next. In the text this morning, which is so profound because we get so caught up in what we're going through. I want my house. I want my man. I want my woman. I want this. I want that. I look fine. I'm trying to lose some weight. I just got, you know, gotta, I got to go to this, this uh, party. I'm going to my high school reunion. And we get so caught up that we don't realize the, the truth of life is that life is fleeting. I, I believe it's Psalm 39. I think it's Psalm 39. Go there for a minute. Psalm 39, verse 4 through 6. The, what, what one has to really get in your consciousness, it, 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 you, you ain't got a whole lot of time here. You, you, I don't know who's confused you, Sister Good Looking and Mr. Good Looking. You, you ain't got to, in fact, you, nobody said you're going to live to 50 or 40 or 35. You, you lucky you've gotten as far as you've gotten. You can die at any moment. Ain't no guarantees on days or weeks you're going to be here next month, next year. Somebody got to tell you that your life could be over in a moment, baby. You got to live your life like you might not have the next moment that you got so he said, Lord, because he's the only one, Lord, make me to know my end. That there's an end to this. See, when we, when we heard about what happened out there, we, they should have stopped everything. Why? Because our country was hit. So the first thing I'm thinking is, why is it, you know, because everybody say America is a blessed nation. 
that, that, that we were blessed. And what they, what they try to do, and I'm, I'm going to get there, is, is they try to say that the things that are happening to America is because of what we've done. And they try to tell us that because we have legalized abortion, that all these things are happening to us. That's a lie. We have done wor far worse than abortion in this country. I ain't talking to nobody. I said we have done far worse than abortion in this country. And the, co and the government has sanctioned some of the things that have been going on in this country. So, so, so when these things start happening, you got to look at your own eyes and see where, what the history is. Because sometimes you reap what you sow. I looked at that, that area, that city. That, listen, there was some bad sheriffs in that city. Un, unrighteous sheriffs. They did some things to some people that, that you, you, listen, there's no way justice could ever be served. So watch this. Every now and then the universe will pay you back. I said every now and then the universe will stick his head up and say, you know what? This has been an area that has messed over people for 20 or 30 years. We finna wipe it all out. And watch this. And the people of God, if they're there, if they're not sensitive to what God is saying, they'll get wiped out too. <clears throat> Anybody hear what I'm saying? He said, Lord, make me to know the end of my, in my end and the measure of my days and what it is that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as handbreadth. And my age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state, at his best state, is altogether vanity. Selah. Surely every man walketh in vain shoe. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. Lord, I got to know that there ain't a whole lot of time to this. So in the text, it's a profound text because they're asking Jesus to, to read, give them, give them a, a, a tarot card reading, a future. Get, read our future. Tell us what's in the crystal ball. And the first thing that they ask him, because see, they, they put so much emphasis on the temple. Everything about the Jew was about the place. Somebody said the place. The covenant was about a place. The covenant now is about a person. It ain't about the place no more. If I, ain't, if I can't get to church, I can still get saved. If I can't get into the, into the, into the priest box to ask for forgiveness, guess what? I don't need no priest. I can get forgiveness all by myself. When you read Matthew 24, it is very, very challenging to read because it's prophetic in nature. It talks about things, the desolation of abomination. And when you start talking about that, I'm very careful because it signifies some things about some organizations, some Christian organizations that I just won't put my mouth on. When it talks about the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the denomination of uh, desolation, when it talks about the desolation, it's talking about a Pacific church organization. And so I, I, I don't get into that because when you start, when you start demeaning church and organization, you, you, you're, you're sitting in a place of judgment, and I won't get there. So when I, when I approach 24 and 25, I do so with care and with reverence. Anybody hear what I'm saying? So the thing that was so magnificent to them in the text was the temple. And they asked Jesus, when... When will be the sign of your coming? And when will be the coming of the end of the age? And he says the first thing to them, the thing that you put so much stock in, that's going to come down. So, so watch this. If, 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 we, if we don't put a whole lot of stock in the church, remember I told you that, I think I was telling somebody the 2080 principle, where 20% of the church supports 80% of the church. So, so it, it, it's not that you're, you're not going to get you're not going to get cheated that way. But, but, but when in, in, in the text where, where it talks about that, that, that temple being brought down, with, with what you've got to begin to see and draw, draw a, a consistency with is, is that is that the thing that you should value most in life is your own life. 
Why? Because the Bible said that you are the temple where the Holy Ghost abides. So Jesus starts telling them in, 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 in a way, he says, listen, he says, the, the temple that you're in, at some point, it won't even be standing. You got to catch this. He says, at some point, the very thing that you value the most won't stand anymore. Every one of us in here, all of us are breathing in oxygen. All of us are letting out. All of us are breathing and exhaling. One day, all of us in this building, even the kids, will stop inhaling and exhaling. That's a fact. I don't, care, I don't care how much more breath you got in you than me. me. you still one day going to stop breathing. Anybody, I, I said, anybody in here, he, he, he's trying to tell you, he said, listen, that temple that you're in, he said, that beautiful temple that you're in, it is going to come down. And, and so what he tries to tell me, he said, these are going to be the signs or the beginning of sorrows. And what our society has tried to make us look at is the wrong things. Jesus, Jesus described that there are nine things or nine particular signs that you will see in the coming of the end times. In the first sign, he says that you will see, he tells them, is that the temple is going to come down. And, and, and what you need to know is that you are not going to be alive forever. Your temple is going to come down. At some point, you're not going to be living in perpetuity. At some point, your temple will come down completely. Mine will come down. Yours will come down. Everybody in here, temple will come down. Anybody hear what I'm saying? And so Jesus, he, he reminds them. He says, he says, your temple will come down. He said, not one stone will be still standing. And as he said on the mount, he says to them, this is this. He said, they said, what shall be the sign of the coming of the end of the world? And he says to them, he said, what will be the sign is one sign that will be so consistent is deception. Deception. Things that people say, things that people do. If you're not careful, they will deceive your eyes, your lying eyes. So watch this. He's telling us that we're living in a time where deception, you can be deceived just by just about anybody, your children, your grandchildren. Anybody out here today is looking to deceive folk. So we're living in a great time of deception. That's why when you hear stuff, you hear stuff on the radio, you hear stuff on the news, it's, they hear a lot of things that are trying to deceive us. They're trying to tell us that we're in a worse place than we really are. Remember, I had, uh, on Wednesday, I told the people the other day, the Lord spoke to me. He said, let me tell you something. As bad as things are, they could be worse. And he said to me, he said, you know, this place, every time we have issues with race, we always say that we have not gotten to where we should be. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, let me tell you something. He said, the country would not be where it's at had not some nameless white people given their life. We know about Martin Luther King. We know about Sojourner Truth. We know about Rosa Parks. But there's some white folks that gave their life. That there are no statues. There's no monuments. There's no holidays. But they knew what their brothers, their aunties, their sisters were doing was wrong. And they were willing to die so that you and I could experience the same freedoms. Watch this. In 1954, this country was not ready for integration. So when the case came up, and it went before the Supreme Court, Warren had just became the, the presiding judge. He was picked by by a conservative who thought that he would not do what he did. Watch this. These nine justices and some were, were devout racists, segregationists. They were faced with a dilemma. They were faced with the law. And they were faced with the reality. If they would render a decision that showed in some way the court was divided on this critical issue, this thing called democracy, this experiment might not survive. And those nine justices, 
in 1954 decided to go against the will of the people and said that separate was not equal. And even though they did not change the hearts of the people, the law changed. And the mark of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Somebody open up their mouth and give God some praise in this place. And so it has happened, we've allowed our brothers and sisters who we love that don't look like us to make us look at the wrong things. One of the, one of the signs of the end times is that, that, that they say, it's in the text here. Look, look what it says. It's in the text here. Um, give me one second. No, not that. Uh, look at verse number nine. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you should be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So he says one of the signs, one of the signs in the end times is that people will begin to hate Christians. And some of our brothers that don't look like us, they've been saying that that's been their narrative all through Congress, all through the Senate. They say, they've been saying, hey, they hate us. They don't want to, they hate us. The liberals hate us. The Democrats, everybody hate us. They hate us, they hate us. And watch this. While they've done that, they've caused us to take our eye off the ball. So I say deception. Nobody in the church, except you might be in China, you might be in Cuba, or some of these crazy places, is being killed because of the Bible. So one of the signs that, that they're saying that it says that they shall be delivered. Who's being afflicted? The only thing that's happened to pastors is somebody's talking about them. And most of them that's getting talked about should be getting talked about. You're in a position of authority. You're in a position of leadership. You ought to be able to deal with some criticism, especially if it's on target. The only thing that we have to worry about today is somebody talking. Ain't nobody trailing me with no gun. Ain't nobody trying to kill no Christian. Ain't nobody chasing you with no cross and no snails. The only thing that you're worried about is sister so-and-so said they don't like you. Sister so-and-so said that your dress was cheap. Sister so-and-so said you stole her man. That's the only thing that you're worried about today. That ain't nothing but nonsense. You hear all that nonsense, and when the man tells you, listen, you better listen. There's weather, there's, there's climactic weather that's coming this way. You better save some money. You better get you a basement. You better build a basement because you ain't safe no more in Kentucky. So they caused us to get our eyes. Oh, one of these beloved uh, ministers of the gospel, uh, Brother Lamb, Daystar. He might know Brother Lamb, Daystar. Him and his wife, Joni Lamb. Great people. Not perfect. Marcus, Marcus Lamb. Great people. Love the Lord. Got caught up in the deception about the vaccine. He wouldn't take the shot. And now, guess what? He with Jesus. Didn't have to be. There's so many people that are dead that love the Lord that didn't have to die. They're dead because they listened to deception. They have been deceived by their own loved ones. So Jesus said, take heed that men don't deceive you. And, and watch this. So what are the signs that we need to be looking for? These signs of deceit and deception. That's what we need to be. When you see deception on the level that it is on today, you know that we're in the end time. In fact, the sign that these were the end times is what Jesus came. But the question always to each generation is, is the world coming to an end now? We don't know that question. But guess what? Your world is coming to an end soon. Did I say that right? I can't tell you that the whole world is coming to an end. But your world is coming to an end soon. 
which means you can't afford anybody to deceive you right now. Why? Because we're living in a time of sorrow, which means, watch this, when you talk about sorrow, you're talking about birth pains. You're talking about something happening so traumatized that you can't recover from it. And you got to be able to keep your eyes on sorrow in the midst of joy. Because you can still have joy in the midst of sorrow. Do I have a witness in this building this morning? In the midst of what took place in Kentucky, I still got joy. Now it's tempered, but I still got it. It's tempered, but I still have it. It's unspeakable and it's full of glory. Do I have a witness in here? Christ makes three significant statements that definitely point towards an intensification of signs. He said, all these are the beginning of sorrows, but he that shall be saved or he that shall endure into the end, the same shall be saved. Then he says, and the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Vacation in the last days of ungodliness, we see an intensification. The Bible said that there'll be false prophets. They're everywhere. There's a level of false, there's a level of false pro prophetic voices all over the country saying all kinds of things, telling you that God's going to do this and God's going to do that and God's going to do this. And watch this. I wonder what the pastors were saying in Kentucky last week. I wonder what they said. I wonder they said, well, we'll see you, we'll see you next week. And next week wasn't coming. Charity, a whole city. They talk about what it was, you know, and how do we know we live in crazy times? A Republican senator from Mississippi, and T, I'm not trying to pick up Mississippi. He said, he said, if the Russians invade Ukraine, we should send troops and the nuclear option should not be off the table. I said, is he out of his mind? I said, the reason he said that, because ain't nobody down in Mississippi they're trying to kill. <laughs> and I mean, <laughs> they will kill people in New York and and Tam you know why they won't kill you? Know, guess why Tampa's a hot spot? You don't know why? McDill Air Force Base. See, y'all ain't know y'all live around danger. McDill Air Force Base runs the war for Southcom. All down south, everything over the Middle East, McDill Air Force Base is the brain, the headquarters. So watch this. If you live in this area, they have targeted this area for destruction. He said, take heed that you're not deceived. Take heed that you're not deceived. This present age is considered by God to be the age of the last days. According to God's timetable, the history of the church, its presence on earth takes place in the last days. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel in the last days to come. God's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see vision. Christ gives these signs for a very specific purpose. He is preparing his disciples to endure and to keep their hope for his return alive. He's strengthening their faith in God and the world to come. So what we're to be doing while all this stuff is going on is encouraging each other until the end comes. Somebody say encourage me. So we know that there's violence, but we can't, I can't be sitting up and watching it always on the news. And then when I finish watching the news, I call so-and-so. You know, they killed so-and-so. They killed so-and-so. So the enemy wants us to take our eye. He said, listen, the text says there's going to be wars. There's going to be rumors of wars. There's going to be people getting killed. Black people, white people, guess what? Don't take your eye off the ball. Don't get caught up in all the social and social justice issues. Why? Because there's something's taking place. This, the, 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 uh, when a woman is travailing, she's in labor. The nation, the world, the, listen, let me tell you this. I said this before. That this pandemic, for me, is a turning point in human history. 
What you saw take place just the other day in Kentucky is also a sign that we're in the beginning of the throes of sorrow. Which means these things are going to begin to happen more regularly. And you can't be just so cute and think ain't nothing happening and you take your eye off the ball and tomorrow you lose everything. So they always talk about severe religious persecution. We can't be, we won't be able to do this. And they, so they, they threw all the things about gay people and, and, and this gender and that gender, trying to confuse us, trying to get us to a place where we don't love people that are gay. We have to love everybody. I said we have to love everybody. For God so love, for God so love. We can't put people in categories. They are human and they are sinners who can be saved by grace. Who can be saved by grace. If he saved you, he can save anybody. I dare you to give your neighbor an imaginary high five and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. If God can save you, he can save the whole monger. If he can save you, then the crack addict got a chance. If he can save you, then he can save the lesbian. If he can save you, then he can save the homosexual. If he can save you, then he can save the pedophile. If he can save you, he can save the liar. Do I have anybody in here that he is saved, that he is washed in the blood of the Lamb? That greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. That now you can do all things through Christ that strengthen you. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who he had redeemed from the hand of the enemy. If you used to be in the enemy's hand. But God broke the back of the enemy and set you free. Open up your mouth and give him a praise. Say yeah. Come on and praise him. Come on and lift him up. Say yeah. Be not deceived. So, the sign of his coming. It, it, or the, or it, 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 in this time that we're living, we ought to be about the things that God wants us to be about. Somebody say amen. amen. We ought to be about evangelizing. But we shall get so get caught up in the things that are going on around us that we become so frightened and so fearful that we don't have church anymore. Amen. I'm glad this morning that more of you are here today than has ever been since the pandemic started. Give yourself a hand. Oh, come on. Do better than that. I said more people are here this morning than 18 months ago. Which means either you got a shot or you got two shots or you got three shots or you're still operating on the principle of faith. Do I have anybody in like that? That through these 18 months, the God that you serve has kept you safe from pandemic seasons, stages seen and unseen. Come on and open up your mouth and give God some thanks for the 18 months that has kept you safe from a pandemic. Some of y'all caught it and you live to tell about it. Open up your mouth and give him a raise. I didn't catch it, but I'm thankful. I caught a lot of other things. I should be dead, sleeping in my grave. But God, but God, who has been rich in mercy, especially in my life he made a way when there was no way and every time i fell down he picked me back up and i got up stronger i got up better somebody say yeah open up your mouth and give god a praise these might be the last days but i'm fully persuaded that he that began a good work in me shall, shall, I said he shall, we may endure for a night, but my joy, I 
got some joy coming. Come on, somebody get help with me. Get up on your feet and holler. We're in a season of miracles. Lift up your hands. There's miracles in the air. Come on and snatch a miracle. Come on, receive it. Receive it. Come on and call it in. I don't know what your needs are. Come on. Come on. Open up your mouth. Call a miracle in. If it's financial, call it in. If it's relational, call it in. Call it in. If it's a trial, call it in. Say it. Tomorrow morning, 76, it gon' look good on you. You didn't know you'd get there, but you're there. Say yeah, say yeah. Somebody praise him for me in this place. Call her. I don't know how I would act. If my mother was still alive, but yours is still here, and she got a birthday tomorrow, you ought to be giving God. And watch this. If you don't give it to her, somebody in here will. Come on, T. Will you praise God for Carla's mother, for being a surrogate mother? To you. Come on, Scylla. Will you praise God for Carla's mother? Come on, Dana. Come on, Tamika. Will you praise God for Bernadine Randall, who stepped in in a rocky situation? But God balanced it all out until she proved who she was. See ya. See ya.
we're not gonna be distracted. We're gonna praise the Lord today. Come on. Yeah.
and you was thinking about how good God has been to you. And you would say, I really love the Lord. See, that's what you was thinking about. I really love, love, love the Lord. Come on, don't nobody hear no. Don't nobody hear no. You don't know what he's done for me. Hallelujah. Gave me the victory. You see, you know what he gave you the victory for this morning. See, nobody know how you got in here this morning but you. I really love the Lord. Come on, say it one more time and say it from your back. Say, hey, I, I really love, really love, I love, love the Lord. The Lord. That's why sister stand up back there and testify. I really love what you're thinking about. I really love. 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 I love the Lord. Nobody know 
what a week you had this past week. Nobody know how you get up this way. I love him. I love him. Come on, come on, come on. I love I love the Lord. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know what. Shut up, Bubba. Shut up. Hey. He gave me the Glory to God. And I love him. Charity, I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. I said I love him. Okay, one last time. Because you see, when I was growing up, and they said, when you start moaning and you start telling them, what is going on with you and you just stop moaning to God because see that's where you enter really into his presence and you go mm -hmm. you don't know you don't know you don't know you don't know tell it to you don't tell know it to you don't know tell it to you you don't know you don't know thank you lord thank you lord did he got the thank you thank you lord thank you lord I really love the Lord this morning. I really love the Lord. 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 God right now in the name of Jesus. We came this morning to Gave give you glory. praise, oh God. And we thank and you I right now him. in the I name of Jesus. Him. We know if we had 10,000 tongues this morning, truly we couldn't praise you enough. But we want to believe right now, oh God, right now that you are pleased Ooh. with our service in the name of Jesus. Because this when it's all said and done, we want to be that good and that faithful servant. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. It's offering time. Come on, that's still praising. Hallelujah. It's offering time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, she said it's offering time. Yes. Come on, come on, just raise your hand. You ought to be giving God praise because you got something to give him. Yes, yes. Remember when you didn't have anything? I said, you remember then? You ain't there now. You ought to give God thanks. You are, you are a long ways from when you didn't have anything. Oh, I'm going I'm to I'm get on your street in a minute. I said, you are a long ways from when you didn't have anything. You ought to give God thanks. Couldn't even afford underwear. Deodorants. Toothpaste. Come on. Long ways from there. Couldn't pay your rent, your car note. You are a long ways from there, darling. You even got a savings account now. You are a long ways. You don't know what he's done for me. Gave me the victory. And I love him. I love him. See what you started? <laughs> Come on, just straighten up your hands right now. She come and let her know if you need anything. Because this is what he gives. He wants us just to give that. He's already given us the name. Gave me more, the victory. More, more than we can ever ask. Truly, he has opened up a window. And we've had so much.
up with folk about the Lord, my Jesus. Better to me than I've been to myself. to myself. I said better to me than I've been. I said better to me than I've been yes, yes, to yes. myself. Do I have anybody out oh, there yes, like that? Yes, yes, He's yes. been better to you than you've been to yourself. opportunity to give right now. Heavenly Father, we know that you've made everything in this world and no matter what it all just truly belongs to you. You've been so generous to us today, each and every day. We pray that this body of Christ today at this moment has demonstrated its generosity by giving back to you what is already yours. Jesus' name we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 We just want to acknowledge all of all of our visitors. If you're here today, we just want to acknowledge you. Come on, you can stand and we want to acknowledge you. Amen. And those who are out in Facebook land and who's out on YouTube, everybody in this house began this to say welcome to everyone out there. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And to those of you who are visiting, you raise your hand. We're just so happy to have you here. And you always get a special treat at the end of our service. And you usually get it from our first lady. So don't fear. Just look around because she'll be strambling right back there to you. Letting, giving you some of our New Life Christian Fellowship love. Amen. Amen. Oh, hey, sis. Amen. 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 God bless hey, you. God sis. bless you this morning. And what about the one next to you? She's your sister too? Oh, okay. Amen. 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 God bless you. God Amen. bless you this morning. So nice to have you. Amen. Amen. We just want to thank all of you who attended our wow on yesterday. Come on, those of you who are in tennis. Then we have a great time on yesterday. I mean, my gift got stolen so many times yesterday. I didn't want to fight, but I almost fought yesterday for just one scarf. And which you all know, I'm not even going to tell you who it was. I almost wanted to fight the first lady yesterday. Uh -oh. Amen. So hey, but you know, so I decided to not to. So glad and I'm looking forward to seeing what I'm going to be receiving for Christmas. Amen. 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 Just want all of you is to make sure that if you want to be a part of anything that's on our calendar, to please let Minister Carla know because we are preparing for next year with our committees and all of the different things. Oh, if, you're, if there's just something that you would like to start, please let us know so that uh, we can get that on the calendar. For just a couple of you, Mother Bernadine wants to see Sister Dana, Sister Michelle, Sister Shantana and Sister Charity about 10 minutes right after service. Amen. 
And before I sit down, I know that our bishop is going to be giving this over to Sister uh, Scylla. But come on, she was here on Wednesday. Now, I'll be glad to have our first lady back with us. Didn't we miss her? And sitting on that front seat doing that little thing that she normally do. Didn't we miss her? Amen. Show her some love this morning. Come on. We missed her so much. Uh, those two weeks that she was here. And Sister Cecilia, of course, we're happy to have you back. On behalf of Bishop Sister Cecilia, this ends my announcement. T.T., you want to say anything? Testimony? No. I'm just asking. You want to share your testimony before I... Oh, we got two. Come on, T.T. Yes, yes, Bishop. The way you do it, class, Bishop. Sit down. Sit down, Bishop. Sit down. I'm the pre... I'm doing you the same way you did me in class. <laughs> Get up. <laughs> so um, I gave this testimony on the prayer line on Friday, but maybe Bishop wants me to say it um, in a larger forum in the church today just to encourage uh, one another. What I just want to say is that um, please look at this man as a real man of God. He's living what he preaches. And um, one thing I, I always tell him that had made me stay back in this church are the sermons, the words that come from this pulpit. I mean, even if um, your heart is a heart of rock, it will, God will soften it with those words. So um, it's about um, a miracle because it's a miracle. Um, I, 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 I didn't know that I had the opportunity to request for SBA loan as a business uh, person. So I spoke to Bishop one and he said, didn't you get a letter? I'm like, I might have, and I didn't pay attention to it. So I was scrambling through my email, and I saw that they had actually emailed me since April. <laughs> and I even downloaded it, but I just threw the letter away, the email, and didn't pay attention to it. So it's like, no. You know, so I, I read the email, and I actually followed what they told me to do, to send an email. But again, I didn't hear anything from them. So one day, Bishop and I was just speaking. I'm like, Bishop, these people never even acknowledge my email. He's like, I got their number. You need to call them. <laughs> so he gave me the number. I called and they are like, okay, you should have logged into your quarter. I'm like, I didn't know I should have done that. Apparently they were waiting for me and I didn't know anything. So now I responded to whatever, you know, then they sent me an email and it's like, oh, uh, we need to know all your losses and documents. I'm like, what other documents? I've sent all my tax return. So I called Bishop. I mean, at that point, I was discouraged and like, I don't know what kind of documents the Bishop say. You know what? I can see fear in you. Let us pray. And he prayed with me over the phone. He said, ask for anything you want. I'm like, but like how much? He said, I don't know. But you know what you need. So to God be the glory. I just threw out an arbitrary number. To my surprise, the next day, they gave me more than what I was asking for. And I called Bishop. I was screaming like, I can't believe this. I didn't ask for this amount. Bishop said, didn't I tell you? So I, it's just a testimony to, to show that miracles are happening in this church. Our God is a good God, as we always say. Yes, yes. And he's a God that listens. And I want this testimony to encourage others. Because when Bishop speaks, know that it's the Spirit of the Lord speaking through him. I remember um, maybe a year or two ago, um, we all know our sister that had a little issue with um, um, you know, some legal issues. I remember. Because one thing I tell Bishop, I say, look, when I'm in church, I'm paying attention to everything, all the words. I'm not distracted. So I remember everything being said. That is the way I was brought up. I don't come to church. 
to be going around talking up. No. My ears are well opened and I'm listening attentively. So I remember he just came as he was prophesying and told the mother of our sister that day. She was sitting where Brother Brown. He said, something will happen that will change her situation and she will be released. I caught that. He said it. He prayed for the mother and he continued with Samuel. So the day I heard that, I, was, I called the bishop. I said, he might not even remember what God prophesied through. I said, bishop, you said it. You told the mother that something will happen. Nobody knew at that time that coronavirus would happen. That we make things to change for this, our sister. Amen. So please, you know, let's keep praying for him because that's always my prayer. That the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit will not depart from his life. And I have always believed that everything that he's believing God for, for this church, I always say it. Even at that hotel we went, after I gave my own presentation, that was a prayer. I said, that building, we are going to have it. And I know God has done it. Thank you. God bless you all. In Jesus. Amen. Bless you. Thank you. Give it, baby, get that to her. All right. Good morning. Uh, good morning, New Life. Thank you, Sister Silla, for allowing me to deference to you because I want your blessings and your speech or whatever it is you want to say to come last. But I know that um, what I got up here to say this uh, today, this morning, this afternoon, is that I know that I'm celebrating my birthday, and I thank God for the celebration. As I walked through the church this morning with my sisters, Sister Geraldine and Sister Eloise, I thought, what a blessing. I want to be just like these ladies when I get their age. But this over 75 club, we got it going on in here. Amen. Come on, I say it, Mom. I, I want to get there, boy. I'm so thankful. I want to get there. But the next thing I wanted to say is I thank you for all of your birthday wishes. But most of all, I thank you for all of the love that I have received here in New Life. You just really don't know to have been raised up in a church and served for over 60-something years. To come here, I had no intentions of going in New Life Church. You can ask Carla. I say, I ain't going there. <laughs> she always say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ain't going there. Sure, she won't ever stop saying that. But I have gotten so much love for this church. I love every member. I have loved every member of this church, and you have just <coughs> bestowed so much love. I never thought I could leave my home and come here and find such loving, kind people. And so I just wanted to say that, and I wanted to say especially to Bishop. He has just been such a loving and sister seller. They've been so loving and kind and you have inspired me so much in my life I had one pastor he was my pastor of inception I had another pastor was the pastor of my education and another pastor is my pastor of inspiration the bishop has been my inspiration and my celebration I have grown so much here and I just praise God for just keep praying even when you don't feel like if you just let God lead your life, he will lead you to where you need to be so you can get what he asked for you to have. And I just thank you for the love and for the privilege that I have to serve here in new life. And Bishop, to you, we laugh, but I just love you so much for being my pastor. And I never thought I would say I could have another pastor. And I thank you so much for being my pastor. I really, really do thank you. And I just, you, know, you God has been over you and with you all your life. And he's been, as you've ministered, he's been with you. But it's something about these last few months. I see a greater anointing on your life. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart where God has yet for you to see. You have been faithful. Yes, you said you have not been perfect. Yes, you have fallen. But I've watched you get up and you're going places. You're doing things. And I just thank you. And I want you to know that I appreciate the both of you 
with all my heart. I appreciate all of you with all my love. God bless you all. I didn't even get a chance to relate with my daughter, not relate, but be around her when she was going to the age of charity and Celeste and Silas. But God gave me an opportunity That's right. to have been able to serve with my children and to share That's with my right. grandchildren. I still get it. Amen. Amen. Well, still a clean today, ain't she? Check out. Clean all the time. I'll tell my, I'll tell my specific today. Come on now, <laughs> Marty. What are we gonna do with? I was with, clean with the when he met me. The first. <laughs> you see, that's why I called it the first. My uniform was starch. My boots was fit shine. My hat was on my head, and I was walking down the street minding yeah, my own and, business. Now, don't st tell her leave me alone, cause I got some. I, I was tell leave me alone. Don't, don't go there. I, I would tell you what I was looking for. But what I really wanted to say today. Don't do it now. Don't do it. Bishop. Don't leave me alone now. <laughs> you just got your glory, okay? <laughs> oh, just, just don't do that. <laughs> what I really wanted to say is that I didn't know what turning 69 was going to be like. But I knew it was the last of my 60s, and I knew that God definitely had something. Thank you. That God certainly had something and stored and planned for me. What I wanted to share with you is that this year, this birthday, has been the best birthday ever in my life. Okay? I got more gifts before my birthday, during my birthday, after my birthday, and when I came back from California, where I also celebrated my birthday as well. I'm amazed at what God has done in the lives of those who truly love me. I love all of God's people. My prayer is always, Lord, bless me to be a blessing. And I try my best. I don't always hit the mark, but I try my best to be a blessing to God's people. Not to the people that I love so the much but to God's people. Amen. So those who are out there who also bless me, not here today, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for every card, for every donation monetarily, for every gift. You know, uh, Sister Cassandra got up here, and she read this wonderful thing about what I like and what I don't like and what I have and what I make and all this stuff, you know? But I'm going to tell you what I do like. I like money. Okay? Do you know that? <laughs> I love Michael Kors. I don't care what Michael Kors got. I like it. I got it this year. I got the fragrances. I got the money. I mean, oh, my God. I just, you know. So if you didn't bless me, you still got time. Lord, help, <laughs> Lord, help the church. What are we going to do with her? What are we going to do? Again, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I have it. Oh, I forgot to say, uh, Bishop was good to me, too. See, I, I started telling you when, when they said, when I saw her work, wearing that uniform, I started to tell you what I really saw. <laughs> right? The devil's all over me. He said, say it, say it, say it. Say it now, say it. I got to tell Sherry later on. <laughs> I can't say it. Are you doing announcements? Are you finished? Yes, let's do the birthday song. Come on, Teets. You're singing it with them red shoes on. Come on. Yeah. Do you think I missed them shoes? No, baby. Them shoes is bad. They clean, though. Can I wear them? Let me see. 
JC looks so cute. We know that Tamara's mother is our birthday. And all of you, I know that even as Bishop stated a little bit um, early on today, I tell you, I, I, I've been with Carla and for the, over, what, 25 years now, and from when I met her, and I can tell you, when I met her, um, my mother had, yeah, my mother had passed, and, you know, Miss D pulled me over to the side, and she said, T, girl, you got a mother, and I tell you, my children have not gone without, and I have not gone without, and I'm so proud today, is this staying here, and I know you know this, and I do my best to always try to take care of her. Don't say I don't love none of you guys. But she stepped right in and said, T, I am your mother. And I'm here to tell you, she did take care. And she still does. She does everything. And I'm not just saying something. Charity know, all of them know, she does everything for me. I don't care whenever I need something. And you know, the word tells us we're to give them their flowers. And I don't just say this now in front of you guys, because none of you all know knew this, but she has done just that up in my life. And I'm honored, honored is to stand here. And I know when she goes out and she tells people, I'm just telling you for me, she said, oh, here my other daughter, my crazy daughter. <laughs> she never calls me her same daughter. Why? I don't know. But she introduces she me to every, in Miami, in California, everywhere crazy. we've been together. She never calls me same. So I always ask her, Miss, she say, you just my crazy you baby that I love. And that is what she say. God bless you. Let us all sing happy birthday to her right now. Amen. <laughs> chicken. Marty, you clean back there, man. Let's stand for the benediction. How many glad they came to church today? What a time we had. Amen. Did we dance? Thank God for, the, for your family being here. Thank God for your family being here. Come on, let's give God praise for their family. Hearts and minds are clear. God, you created us in your image and your likeness. You never made a mistake with any one of us. We are all yours. Black, brown, red, or black. We make no excuses for who we are. You love us for just what you made us. Help us become better people, better citizens of this planet. Help us find our niche, our purpose in you so that life is not so frustrating. Thank you for your word and your worship and your praise. And thank you for communing with the saints this morning. As we leave this place with never your presence, we're reminded of your second coming. We ask that you hasten it now unto him who's able to keep each of us from falling. He alone has the power to present each of us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the wise God, his, your Savior, and mine, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remind you and I that God loves us. We are the apple of his eye. Don't forget that. Don't forget how much he loves you. Go in his blessings. 
and go on his joy. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. Take us home, Sherwood. Make sure you greet somebody before you leave. God bless you. We love you. Thanks for tuning in. See you Sunday, Wednesday. Hit like and share. Put some comments in there. Let us know what you thought about the service. Be blessed. The Lord is on your side. Hallelujah.